In 2015, uh, I help set up the Dublin Living Lab. As part of this project we were exploring uh, the uses to which the, we could put the Internet of Things in the real world, often in difficult environments. So with Dublin City Council we helped build an experimental flood monitoring system where we uh, were looking at affordable sensing. So as an example we may think about uh, a large ri a river like the Liffey. You may sense that, we can put sensors on that and they're very expensive. Uh, but how then do you sense the small streams, the tributaries that, for, that go into the Liffey or kind of certain areas that may be problematic, maybe an underground car park that's prone to flooding. We wanted to find ways to build sensors, we wanted to build sensors and test them in, re, in those environments uh, and explore how effective those were. Um, if it's a small stream, you know, and there's a three hour storm, it's much more likely that the stream is going to get flooded than something, than, than a big river like the Liffey. We also put uh, rain gauges all over Dublin and really with the idea of exploring, you know, if we could get much more hyper local data from across this network of sensors that we're building. And then you've got to explore how to represent that data fitted into the work practices of the people you're working with. This is really where the ethnographer can help, is going to work with the different teams within a place like Dublin City Council, the people that clean the gullies, that you know do the river dredging, the people that give warnings um, to the different organisations across Dublin. So really understanding how they all work and sometimes don't work together, those are all critical questions when you're developing these types of systems. The most recent project that I've been working on in, uh, for the last year is called AV65, which is short for Autonomous Vehicle 65. This is a, a collaboration between Intel and Maynooth University and SFI Lero. One of the purposes of that study was to help design uh, autonomous vehicles from the perspective of older people. You know, what are their needs? You know, what are their, you know, how should they interact with the cars? Um, but to do that, you have to really start putting yourself into the shoes of, of different types of older people. And that leads to asking questions about, well, why do they give up their driver's licenses? When? You know, what, what leads up to that? What are the implications afterwards for losing their license? And that can be very different for someone who lives in the city, that lives in the countryside. But even someone who lives in the city who is well served by public transport, for instance, uh, if you're starting to lose your physical mobility, your ability to walk to the bus stop, these can have profound implications for your quality of life. So we very much uh, have spent a lot of time exploring these issues, but also exploring how autonomous vehicles can help with this, but also really where they, they don't go far enough, you know, where you need arm-to-arm -arm rather than door-to-door -door care.